Manhood. Brought to you in part by Reboot Sports Drink. Welcome to Manhood. Today's topic is, as a man, should we fight for a romantic relationship? My name is Johanse Ayodike, and I'm a behavior change specialist. To my left, I have Robert Dumas, media personality and public figure. To my right, I have Shane Ramjet, the CARICOM head. Oh, he's in head for Heineken. Sure. And I have Niall McNeish, creative artist. And we are a few men, not necessarily talking on behalf of all men, but we are a few men mm -hmm. speaking to all men and women who would who want Absolutely. to listen also. All right, so should men fight, should we men fight for our romantic yeah. relationships? Interesting so, topic. Very interesting one and very apt um, in, in, in so many ways. And the question, the, the, we want to stress on the, should we as men or should a man fight for a, rom a romantic relationship? And, that, and the reason why I want to stress on the man is because that definition and what women also think of that man, should you fight, does it make you less of a man by doing so, mm. is what we want to talk about as well. Does it, does it make any sense, first and foremost, but if, if you decide to, as how are you then looked at, not by your peers or not by other men, because that's not what's important, they're not lying in the bed with you, or sitting on the counter, or however <coughs> they decide to get jiggy, right? We're talking about how does that woman or mm. other women then think of you? And also, if you do get back with that person, if you're fighting, you win that fight, in this case, you might win the battle, but do you lose the war in the end? How do they then, how is your life after that? Well, mm. let, let, let me premise first before you go on. Let's define when you say fighting for a relationship. Mm -hmm. okay. What exactly mean by fight? Because let's just say if um, you, you're making efforts to, to do, let's say you had a deficit in the relationship and mm -hmm. you're making efforts. So let's just say, i just give an example. You, you wasn't doing date night every week or every mm -hmm. month. So you make the effort now going to do date night, mm -hmm. right? Is that what we call in fight or, no. or are we calling maybe more like begging? Because uh, if right. no, so if I want now to the premise, person... I want to premise. So, so you, your points are really good based on the interpretation of how I brought up this subject, mm -hmm. Right. But what I what what I, the, 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 the what we're saying is is when we say fight, with there are many different areas I'd like us to talk about here today. But the but the key one is when we say fight, it's done. And you're now fighting to Okay, so the relationship it's end. over. Ends. It's, it's, okay. it's it over. It has and ended. It has ended, whether it okay. be marriage, or you know, a relationship, a situation, you know, uh whatever the case may be. It could even be Friends that beep, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to fight for, how are, how is it then interpreted by the by the by your partner at that point? And do you want do you want to do it? And what is the premise in in that case? So, if you're in the relationship and things are going a bit rocky and you realize it, you know you you might get the headache and the you're feeling sleepy and all these other things very often. How when you say fight, you're quite right to say. Um, what do you now do? Do you need to step up date night? Do you maybe need couples counseling? Um, laugh more, figure out her needs, listen more, all of these things, because that's, we, which we can't mm -hmm. talk about, that's, that's how you maintain the relationship or spice it up or keep the relationship. I'm speaking more from, always best, best to give an anecdote. A friend of mine, um, recently, his partner told him she loves somebody else. Right. Wow. Right? Love somebody else. Crushing. Um, very that's crushing. crushing. That's crushing. <clears throat> Buddy, oh. That's crushing on so many levels. Yeah. Oh. What e and, and, and we can talk about ego in a negative way, but it is what it is. You can, call, you can tell somebody, you know, how they behave, but if you're a man, that's in it. If you're a woman, mm -hmm. there's certain things that are innate to you. So mm -hmm. ego and that, we, we, we speak about so many things in, in, as it pertains to your ego, but it is what it is. It is what it is. But kudos to right? that. Kudos to the partner who actually admitted that because I know that's a real. We, difficult we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk. We, to we're going to get to that because I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you because that that's that's what I thought as well. But 
There's another there's, layer. There's, there's another there's layer. layer. There's, there's, layers, there's kudos and there's kudos. We're talking about, gotcha. talk about how the man receiving it, not thinking to himself, good on you. Okay. You know, oh, so I, don't think exactly. it, I, res- <laughs> I respect you, you know? It, that's not happening, right? It, it, what is what what they say? It is what it is, is till it's R. So... No, um, I yes. huh? that, that's I've never heard that. I've well, that probably what? will never you use it. Make it up to himself? Maybe, well, no. I mean, I, I, <laughs> but I, I, will heard, I, heard, I heard our friend Mikel Tejas say that I probably said it wrong. I do apologize, <laughs> Mikel. But, please. But, but we'll figure it out. As the saying goes, what is the is will is, it cannot ah. It cannot yeah. ah. I like that one, my friend. So she woke up one day and just said, listen, I love somebody else. And it wasn't a case of. I'm remorseful, because that's a key thing. Are you remorseful? Then there could be a fight. But if if the woman looks at you and says, I am I, I done head in there, and you are now getting that that whammy. So his world has fallen apart, and it's like, okay, well, what is happening to the persons that he shared it with now are saying, fight. So I'm so the question is, brothers. What are you fighting for? The person has said, "I'm I love somebody else." So you, you, it's not That's like wild. it's not like I'm just unhappy with you. You know, pretty much fine. Or that, that that person was unhappy. I'm moving on with somebody else, and you there, you playing catch up. That 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 horse is already bolted, and it have no fight there. It have no fight there. It have no fight there because she already said, "Not only am I not unhappy with you, but somebody else already makes me happy." Love, is she say no. She didn't say, like, yeah, I, 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 I'm jamming somebody else. Mm. She say, I love, I'm in love with somebody else, yeah. and it's not you. That's wild. That's crazy. But in a in a romantic relationship, if you have to fight, it has to be two people fighting. True. Yeah, maybe one had more indiscretions and the other and has to work a little bit harder at that fight. But if there's nothing there, there's nothing there, right? Facts. So two people have to have to want to be there at some level. Correct. And I think what you said earlier. That's not fighting in my world. That's just working on your relationship mm-hmm. and and improving date night, being better at certain things. Mm-hmm. And trust me, in my world, when carnival comes around, I have to work real hard at my relationship, right? I mean, like, 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 I like to party and like we all, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's work, mm-hmm. and and it's constant work for constant reward. That's how it should be. Mm-hmm. But when you're at those junctions, those bridges, that's a fight. But well, but it hmm. can't be alone. You both have to want something out of it. So let me ask you something, Shane. Does he, when, when does he 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40, you know, 59, 41, all of these ratios and, and percentages apply? So, you know, they say if, if you come home in a, in a relationship and, and the person's at 80 with regards to angry, right? You, gotta be at, you can't be at 21 because there's only 100. So if you're at gotcha. 21, there's going to be disaster. So... If at that point you're in that relationship where the person might say, I want a divorce, I want a separation, I want a breakup, and it's not just simply out of emotion, they might really mean it at the time. They might be getting a little attention, they might feel good, they might be going to gym, and all of a sudden, what made them, you know, presence, whether it be trauma bonding, all of these things, you know, women, they they go and get um, implants and they start to feel better about themselves, they get that attention. And they might not realize at the time that they they wanted that attention on social media, the likes, etc. And they they be, they're going down a path at that point of that misled adoration. Are you to fight at that point to while they're while they're sort of lost, if the case may be lost, to hold on to the relationship until they can get over that 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 hurdle or that moment or that period that they're going through? Hmm. I think you, you have to be very brutally honest with yourself first oh. and say, okay, if they went outside to find something, was it something I was not giving them that I should have mm-hmm. been? And that's where your fight comes in, right? Now I have to fight to prove myself all over again. But you know, it's a relationship and you have so many factors, contributing factors, Kids, family, yes. society, financial, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know you need you need to have those things planned out um, at a certain stage in your life to consider that there's no one answer, but you have to be very brutally honest to yourself and say, okay, yeah, I was kind of messing up. I could have done better. I know, and you know when you when you should have done better. Okay. You know when you was yes, one sided. No. Although you argue it, you was one sided. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and fix that. And yes, you, know, eh? you know, you know, you know. really do know. You, you yeah. said no, no. I don't feel I do anything yeah. wrong. You turn around and say, <laughs> yeah, I did it wrong. 
So I, 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 I think that the, the fact that you know, because let me come back to two things Robert said. Robert said, um, in his scenario, he said the person wake up all of a sudden, and then he, he say again, all of a sudden, the person realized, right? I don't think. No, I didn't mean all of a sudden they realize. All of us, what I'm saying to to the person who's getting it, mm -hmm. receiving the information, all of a sudden this information comes. You know, you got deluge at that point. You know, okay, flood hitting it, it, you with all of this information, all of these different scenarios. It's not like I'm unhappy or I want to break up or I slept with somebody. It's like all of these things and a lovely person and. I want to be with the person. And it's just constant to all of these happening. And it's all of a sudden to them. That person has been experiencing it all along. So they, when they give that information, the only hurt, if there is any remorse at that point, is because I do have some love for you. But, and I'm it's sorry that this information is now hurting you. But you're not remorseful for it. They're actually right. quite happy. All right, uh, I hear what you're saying, and I misunderstand there, but I'll still use the example because in relationships, human behavior is thought into feeling into action. Mm -hmm. Whatever going on in your mind, right, always manifesting some sort of behavior. Interesting. And because of so that... just say that again for the... So human behavior, thought into feeling into mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. Whatever we think creates our feeling, and feeling is energy mm -hmm. that fuels the action. Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. when sometimes we think we hide in something, Right? Some something in your action always always manifests. And especially let's just say in a marriage scenario where two people living together. And for those who married or live with someone, you can't hide in. If, if even though you're pretending before, eventually who you are comes out. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, indifferent. So I put in that premise out there first. So just pause there for a moment because a lot of people right now, they're in goosebumps, <laughs> asking themselves, you know, WTF. Because people are skeletons. Yes. A lot. And what you're saying now, if you say it's going to manifest, man who have coke and his son, or women, mm -hmm. listen now, now going, what do you mean, boy? Well, listen, mm -hmm. the, tru the truth is the truth. Before, Shane, you said, you had to be brutally honest. My belief is, you have no such thing as brutal honesty. You have no such thing as the harsh truth. The, tru the truth is just the truth. What is harsh is a lie. Whether you're lying to yourself or somebody lying to you. That, right. that is where the harshness is. You want to say going deep so, today, so but I feel yeah. uncomfortable yeah, in this like seat. I have a you know? seat, but you see, Well, well like good, you know, said. because I school men mm. too, you know, because I, and I know he's going to the personal segment yeah. after, but I lived a life of untruth for a long time. I am almost 40 years old, and when I look back, I realize that a lot of what I lived on was untruth. What I thought was the truth. So I'm going with relationships. And even looking back at my own relationships, it was mm -hmm. built on a lot of false, false truth. So if in a scenario where you realize you're not feeling somebody anymore, you don't love somebody anymore, and let me use those two scenarios because if one, somebody say, I'm done, I love somebody else, mm -hmm. you're not really, what you might be fighting for is a fantasy, you know. You have in your mind, what you wanted the relationship to be. Mm -hmm. And you're still holding on to that. You're still attached to that. So even though no matter what the person's saying or doing, you ignoring the truth mm -hmm. to, to hold on to the fantasy. Mm -hmm. So the person say, I don't you know, I with somebody else, I love somebody else. They, they might even get pregnant for the next person, but you still in the, the delusion because you hold on to it so long. Mm -hmm. You see why we have women at seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that you're, you see you're why he's fighting. invited all the time? <clears throat> now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> that, that you're fighting for something that don't exist. Now, I premise that. So let me go back now with mm -hmm. the thought, feeling, and, thought, feeling and action. Mm -hmm. Most times in a relationship before, the person was gaining your signs, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, if you hold on to that fantasy so much, you wouldn't even see it. Mm -hmm. It's only sometimes when they snap out of it, when the divorce happens. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell even clients I have, it's only after, the, and I'll use both male and female, it's only after. But you know what? I really did see that. But, you know, um, I ignore the, the red flags, yeah. right? And as I always give the scenario, if you go to Maracas Beach and you see a red flag, you're going to dive in the water to make sure it's a red flag? No. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's what we do. When in a relationship, we see a red flag and try to justify, try to rationalize. But it's based on the fantasy that we have or, or the perception of that thing that we were attached to. So really, actually, we'd be lying to ourselves. And 
Correct. We in the Lulu exactly. land. Exactly. Correct. So this is this is really really good stuff for the next segment. Um, you said something, Shane, where you said we know, we always do know, but who wants to self inflict? You know, mm-hmm. you, you know they say you can't drown yourself. You could put, you could tie something to your foot and you could go down, but you, you can't, you can't drown yourself. You can't, you know, some people to say. Now, nah, some yeah. people could drown themselves. Yeah. And if if you so attached to that illusion or delusion, mm. you, you will drown yourself. You could push yourself beyond the limits of reality. The reality is, she say I love somebody. She say I was with somebody else. She say I don't want to be with you anymore. That is the reality. But we so attached to that outcome. And even, let's say, male ego, right? In a yeah. segment before we talk about, um, we had a female mm-hmm. guest and she was asking, why when a woman say no? Right, I, I'm not on you. Men still pursue. Pushing. Sometimes that could be your own, your own ego. You feel well. Nah, is I'm so good. I could do whatever it is to convince her otherwise. But as also, you could be lying yeah. to yourself. So, but also, but also, women, women also say, you know, they, everyone likes a challenge. And sometimes when that challenge is done and you no longer feel like you're chasing, it causes a problem. And that's when you talk about things like, you know, even in relationships. And this is things for the second segment, but masculine energy was another thing where the woman, especially when they have kids, now feels that that person is not being a man. And as a result, they start to feel more and more like they have to take on that masculine energy to provide and do things that they perceive that the man should do. Okay. Uh, right? Mm. But second segment. So we're taking a short break and we'll come back asking the question simply, as a man... Should you fight for a romantic relationship? Stay with us. Guys, welcome back. We have Shane Johansson, Robert, and of course, Niall. And we're speaking about should men fight for their romantic relationships. Let me get right back into it. We still did not define what is fight in this particular situation, at least to me, right? How I, how I view it, fighting sounds like not begging, right? But really and truly understanding what was actually needed in a relationship and then applying it. That's what fighting really means. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in a situation where your girlfriend upset with you for some ever reason and she w- w- ready to walk away from you, the fight in this case is understanding why, what you have to do, what are the steps, and then moving forward. If it is that, and I, and I feel that it happens a lot of men, is that we know what fights we cannot win. Okay. I, I realize women, and, I, and, I, and I, very, I'm trying to be very careful not to get cancelled, right? A lot of women don't know when they can't win a fight. They will still rush in. They're the bravest people on the planet, by the way, right? Women, right? They will rush in to the <laughs> biggest person and be like, I can win this. It's like a real delusion. That's how you avoid it. Not delusional. Because they know they can yeah. win any fight. <laughs> Maybe, right? But for men, we, I think, have a better understanding of, mm, I don't think I could win this one, right? Unless you're in a delusional space. No, you have to watch it. Please save me if ever I get into a space where I start to draw, right? You're dating, man. You're um, dating. <laughs> so I think that we know when we can't win the fight. And if you know that you can't win the fight, anything after that is begging. And if you're begging, that's an ick for but, most women. But, but you're, you're, you're speaking from a perspective of logic, right? right. Logic, it, that makes sense. But human emotion is different. And we speak about the ego. Mm-hmm. So you're not looking to say, hey, can I win this fight? Just like... You want it, to win the fight. You want to win the fight. You, you, mm-hmm. you almost need to win the fight because you're grieving at that point. Your That's heart is... Problem you know, is. If it might fit. Some people say physically in certain cases, but your heart is breaking. Your ego is, is crushed. And you are looking at a situation now, looking at, as your hands say, pointed out, whatever you put as your vision or what you thought that that relationship is and what it meant to you and your focus is now crushed. It's no, it's no longer the reality. So when you mm-hmm. say fight, it is a matter of you are going to fight anyway. And you're not necessarily fighting because at that point, um, you necessarily love or want or recognize later down the line that this relationship is going to fizzle out now because of what happened. Mm-hmm. You're going to fight because you don't want another man to win. You're gonna be thinking another man gonna be. 
But that's so, the I think, so, so, Sorry, go ahead, Rob. No. So no, there you go. Yeah, so actually, because I said begging, and to me, begging is a real strong word, eh? because in the traditional sense, begging happens when you lack logic and lack of promise. So you have no choice now but to beg for it. Mm. But fight is very opposite, because fight is you see a brighter future or some version of a future. You see a promise, you see some logic, you see something happening. And a lot of times people get lost, and men get lost mm -hmm. in that because you're fighting, and you're fighting for a relationship, but the relationship is not going to be the same as it was before. Exactly. Especially but you when you're also having beg. discussions you also or beg. big things happening, it's not going to be the exact same as it was before. So now you have to really dress back and say, yo, mm -hmm. yes, I'm fighting for what we had, but do I know what we will have, you know? Mm, that's version what you're saying, that's what you're saying. You, you see what they say about what, what we will have? So let me go with beg and fight. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not being semantic. Mm. I'm being intentional now with the language we're using. Because both beg and fight to me don't have positive connotations. They're not. Because when two people fight, is let's say two opposing ideologies and one person has to win by overpowering the other. Mm. So do we really want to fight for a relationship? And then if I win, that means I overpower what the person wanted and now I have the person. But the person is now in submission. The person now may not even be happy, but I get what I want. Now I put it out there because, so you see, we, we want to get a little role. When I was doing prison counseling, I was specifically, I specifically was interested in talking to the rapist because I didn't understand the, the, the joy, I say enjoy because I don't know, it is from my outside, or the excitement in, in subduing a woman. It, it, it's so much more beautiful to me when she uh, willingly gives herself to you versus mm -hmm. you, you take it from them now. And, and when, I, when I spoke to them, I realized a lot of it was broken men, ego, I, I, in terms of their ego, in terms of even being mm -hmm. attached to something that don't exist. So in their mind, I just give an example. In their mind, I love this woman, or I want this woman, or I want to have sex with this woman, and she is mine. Now, that is not the reality. Yeah? She, she may not even like you. She may not even know you exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are attached to a fantasy. Right. Mm -hmm. So they fight and subdue her. So I'm using the same way in a relationship. So uh, let me go back to what you said about the expectation. If you have an expectation, means there was some sort of agreement. So now we're going there with, that, with a relationship. A relationship, to me, mm -hmm. more romantic or otherwise, should be an agreement between two people. So you, let's say you say you want date night every week for a year. right? That's what you, you put out. And I say, you know what? I can't give you that. I could give you half of the year. So now we together having an agreement. So let's just say same scenario. I step out on you on the relationship and we deciding, not we fighting or begging, we deciding that we're going to give this a try. Now there has to be a, 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 a agreement between two people that now we're working <coughs> towards instead of fighting for. Tell me your thoughts. I, so I, I, I want each of you guys said, and I, and I always say it on this show, you come in with one thought process, one trend of thought, and or train of thought, and during during these fit, these filming, you ha have a totally different perspective, and that that what you all have given me again. A lot of things were thrown out here, so the difference between begging and fighting and red flags and all of these different things, but having and we talk real on this show, so having been in that situation before. You really are so caught up in yourself that you don't see these red flags because you're living, you're in the scenario, or living the life that you want to live. Mm -hmm. And whether you do so or like so, whether you're doing all the stuff that you may want to do, that might be that might thought cause the actions and and all of these things come about that might eventually put you in a situation. And you say, we know, we look back and we know what we have done. But even in knowing what we've done doesn't change the fact when you get the information, the pain is 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 any less real. Mm -hmm. And when at that now stage it, you're yeah. going to almost you're going to beg because it's like when you wake up inebriated, still inebriated, or you go to bed inebriated, and you still wake up um half drunk or still drunk, as they say. Sometimes they tell you the best thing to do is have have a beer or something that balances off. Again, and then takes you back down slow, slowly. 
So if you, whether it works or not, I don't know, right? But I'm just saying that you, you want to ease it. And a lot of times when you're begging, you, you just, you, you're filled with so much, you're overwhelmed with this pain that, that, that hits you. That, and, and that pain could be not just the person who wants to leave, but the fact that they're with another man. And as a man, you're thinking about all the other things that right. that man probably did that you weren't doing. Right. And that woman is having several sort of quote unquote one night stands where they, you know, they, they're freeing up themselves. Because if you're in a marriage or relationship over a period of time, things might have gone, you know, it might, might just start to go a bit downhill. And all of these scenarios are playing around in your head. And you you are you are getting you are getting that hard job of pain. So you want just to maintain something that allows whether it's like she says, okay, I want to come back, or you want some sort of scenario based on that. And as Shane mentioned, that relationship is now if you if it comes back at all, is now 2.0, 3.0. It's, it is certainly, they have not like a clean slate. We, we are going, that woman's going to come back and trust this user going to come in. There's going to be resentment for what you did in the first place. And, and so the reality is, even though you know it's done, based on the scenario, because this is not like, I just want to leave. This is based on your God, depends on the situation. She went with somebody else or other indiscretions, whatever the case may be. Once that trust the fabric of that is broken anything else after that unless you have serious therapy and church and all the rest of it i disagree with that and, and that's what we're here to talk I about with that. So, yeah. because um here's what i feel that we're not the, we 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 getting confused with when we say we're fighting for me mm. i fighting for my wife i'm not fighting for the relationship how i break everything on logically mm. into liability and assets is this woman an asset to my life is this woman a, a liability to my life, right? I will fight for my assets as best as I can with the most logical way I could do it, right? So when we say fight, and, and, and you said something earlier, Rob, where, you know, there's a crushing to a man's ego. Sometimes men's egos need to be crushed. We, we, we need that spanking sometimes, and a lot of times we, we, get, we get lost in our own source. And women with their empathy, actually the ones who are able to be able to play both sides of a relationship most times, Why? whereas I've, I've noticed that men could only see one, right? We can only see, we are a man, this is how things are supposed to go, where a woman are able to kind of flex between what a man should do and mm. what I should do, right? Mm. So going back to my point where um, I don't care about the relationship. I want this woman in my life, no matter what it is, right? Whether it is, if she have to go with somebody else, which has happened to me, I love this girl, mm. I could not be with her anymore, but I, I said to myself, yeah, whatever happened, I need to keep her in my life somehow. So right now we are best friends. She's with someone else. It's, it's hurt my heart every day to see her smiling sometimes, but it's actually make my heart better when I can like, oh, she's happy, but I could not mm. provide that happiness for her any time that we was together. Hmm. That, that, what yeah. So that, that was me fighting, that, and that, I fought, and I won. That's that interesting one, you know. And I actually, I respect that you could say that, because if we're looking at it logically, right, what is an asset, what is not? Let's just say this: the, a woman don't want to be with you romantically, but let's just say she's give real good business advice. I'll just give an example. Mm. I want in my life, I, I realized we were together once and the relationship didn't work, the romantic relationship didn't work. But I still want to be able to have access to the advice. And she have no problem giving me that, but she want to be with somebody else. To be able to see the person, see her with somebody else and you, and it hurt your heart mm -hmm. and still do it. I think that takes a certain degree of, I would say, maturity. Now, I mean, I could argue it and say you, 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 like, you like pain, right? No, but, but I'm But I, I, I use in both scenarios because I think it's really about what you want in life. As, as a man, I think we should be intentional about what we want in life. Mm -hmm. And if we're not emotional about it, now I'm not saying to suppress the emotion, but if we're not emotional about it, you can have everything you want, you know. But sometimes... Or ego, I want this woman and she has to be mine and I want to own her. Versus, you know what, I, I just want her advice. Now, she could be with somebody else. And, and Nyla, I'm real happy you, you, you say that to know because I think that could help a lot of men. And you, you telling me it helped me 
because I, as you were speaking, I even analyzed some of my previous relationships where I wanted the woman to be a specific. I remember my first girlfriend I had, right? I wanted somebody who was my partner, but a mm. woman. So I could share that that sexual, that sensual part of it. And I didn't necessarily see her for her, and I just saw her for what I want. Mm -hmm. So when she presented things that was opposite to what I wanted, I started getting vexed, right? And even, even to the point that I even started looking for somebody else, mm -hmm. thinking, thinking that something was wrong with her versus me not seeing the truth of who she is. And I think... A lot of men, I mean women too, but we, we speak into men right now. A lot of us, we want a partner. We want a relationship, a romantic relationship. And we want it to look like a certain way. Mm -hmm. So then when it, it's something not looking like it, we fight, we beg, because we want it that way. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when we talk about one, it's okay for Niall in this scenario to say, it hurts him to see him with another man, right? But he still has a friendship. But then also for the man, he himself is being, that's a level of maturity because there have men who be like, hey, I don't want you to talk to your ex mm. once it was physical, physical, a physical relationship. So you could also, in many ways, you lose the woman, but you can't even get that because the man that she's with might say, hey, I don't want you to have any connections with it. And also women do the same thing with men. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about the, the wake-up call because the wake-up call is very, what, what you'd find is the person that's going through it, and Shane, we, meant, we spoke about this in, in the break, where the person that's going through it at the time doesn't want to hear that, hey, I give that woman props for telling her truth, mm -hmm. right? Or your friends, may, or other people might look on and say, hey, since that man got that butt, or that breakup, or this happened to him. He he's changed. You know, people want to see that, hey, that, that that has actually worked in a positive in certain ways to make him more humble. The way the, you know his humility is 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 in a as, at, in a different um, has a different presence now. Mm -hmm. All of these different things, and he you may also learn to treat a woman differently or not make the same mistakes unless you like licks and like pain. In the, in Some in in. In the next world, exactly. True. Yes, and then, I mean, no, that's not going to nine. Why is that but, going uh, to nine? But, but Shane, you know, look, he pointed you. Yeah, yeah. fine, yeah. fine. So, so eh? what's your thoughts on 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 the opposite side? The kudos for the person actually telling the truth and that's and that's great when it, when you talk about characters in a movie or it's a far removed story. But that BS when you when you're in it and it's your partner, or it's you, or it's your family member. Yeah, it is. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's hit you right in the gut. Yeah. You know you don't want to hear that. Yeah, maybe it's true. Maybe oh, independence and great, but you don't want to hear that. You know why? Because you there crying in a corner when everybody else leave. When the lime done, and you go to that lonely bed, that rough, and you know that's not what you wanted. You know, that's 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 too that's too much to take sometimes. So, and 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 your role as a as a partner, as a family member amongst men, you have to be sympathetic, mm -hmm. you have to be caring, you have to be advisory, but you also have to leave some room for, hey, if them decide to get back together tomorrow, you can't go out bad talk to that yep. girl and think, you know, you have, yep. to, you have to give them a chance. You just have to be as supportive as possible for your, for your person to find what they really want. Hmm. So I want, to, I want us to take a break and I wanted to really talk about that, Shane, because that is very key. As, as the friends as the family, what do you do, one, with the partner? Because you might have been friends with the, with, with the person. Both, so you, yeah. you don't just want to excommunicate them because mm -hmm. they made a, a decision. Um, and two, how do you be there for that friend? And if you're there for that friend in, a, in, in, in what way that doesn't impact that, should they then get back with that person? Or you are not, there's going to be a point that if somebody's telling you, hey, that person's a so-and-so-and-so, -and -so, because you still love that person, you hearing those things, you don't want to become maybe so defensive of that person. You might then say, boy, I don't even want to hear from you, boy. That girl is a... You go through different stages and levels in that pain. And, and it's really interesting for us to talk about how do you, how are you there for that friend and even the partner who may have, have left. So, you can assure me.
Thank you for staying with us on Manhood. The topic is should men or as a man, should you fight for your romantic relationship? I'm here with Johanse, Shane, Nile, And before we went to the break, we were talking about, we, we ended off talking about a wake-up call um, and how sometimes that may impact the person's behavior going forward so that friends, family, co-workers, colleagues, persons on the outside may have a different outlook on what's happening in that relationship. And sometimes it may work out for the positive, how they treat someone afterwards, how they become a better person, all of these things. But that, at that point, you're just going through your pain. And while you're going through that pain, whether you get back with the person in 3.0 or 2.0 or anything happens, how at that point can you be there for that friend? Because remember, you also have a relationship or may have built, you might have built a relationship with the same person who may be at this stage being vilified. And we don't want that for either party. But that support is needed because only you going through that pain. But as a friend, as a family member, how can you be there for your brethren and, and your sister? Because like I said, she even though she's made a decision to walk away, she went through periods of pain even during that relationship. And it's now being manifested. And even in that quote-unquote happiness of her moving on or not even necessarily being with a man but just deciding to leave, she also needs support. All right. So let me start first with, and you know I always go here, be honest about who you are. So now you are the friend supporting. If your honest thing is them, then mm. say that, mm. right? I'll also add on, on a psychological level. When we out of a relationship, we lose something that we had, or at least we th thought we had. So therefore, if it's loss, is is also you have to go through a period of mourning. So if you think about it like that, if somebody, your friend lost a relative or somebody close to them, how would you support them? Because they're losing something mm -hmm. they have. And I, I'll, I'll give you all this to help understand. You have the five stages of grief, right? Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So I've seen it again. The five stages of grief. Denial. Nah. She, nah, I doubt she, she, she do that. Anger. She really do that, boy. Bargaining. Well, I, may, I, maybe I the to, relationship. I want, to, I want to stop. You know why I want to pause, make you pause there? Because I wanted to see it to the camera. All right. Because right. we, we're here in the presence here. We, could, we hear it. But I want you to specifically say it to your camera. Because I'm hearing these things here and it... And it bringing yeah, back the strong. All right, strong. So, so I go in the five stages of grief. Denial. I can't believe he or she did this thing. Anger. She really or he really do this thing, boy. Bargaining. Well, it's maybe my fault. Is maybe their upbringing, maybe, etc. Depression. Nah, boy. He or she really do that. I feel it as the worst thing in the world. And then acceptance. Yeah, boy. I understand that this is the reality of things. Now, even though I spoke about it in that particular mm. order, doesn't mean that it stays at that order mm. because you could reach acceptance and fly right back mm. to denial and then come to anger and so forth mm. and so on. But understanding that we go through all these emotions, sure. you go through it, your friend will go through it, and being supportive and letting them have that. So if you just, uh, you want to come and cuss, just come and cuss. If you want to come and cry, just come and cry. If you reach acceptance, yes. But then next day, I want to cry again. So just like... You, you, you said something there that not only that's the emotions that you go through, mm -hmm. but when you said certain things like even in the bargaining, those mm -hmm. are things that you also go through in the relationship at, at that, or, the, or the broken relationship at that point because mm -hmm. a man might now approach a woman and say, hey, let's do this and I will give you this. And you're trying now, you're grasping at anything now to bring back some sort of connection. So that, that in, in, in the ways of bargaining or depression, those are also ways, to me, mm -hmm. hearing you say that, that, that I know friends of mine, I might have done myself in relationships, when you're going through that pain, you're, you're just really holding on to anything at that particular point. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, you know, I'll give you money, I'll give you the, or let me mm -hmm. do it. All of these different scenarios come up because you're just desperate you're, 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 to, to ease that pain. A bunch of band-aids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A bunch of band-aids. You know, denial. Boy, this, this, not, this not really happening. Or, you know, maybe it was a one-off. And you start to paint all these scenarios as to what really occurred. And sometimes you're, you're painted worse in your mind as a creative or, you, or less. 
either way it is, you are not owning what the reality of the situation is, which is... That, that is true. It Robert, done. Robert, you saying, I see when you use that word desperate day, that hurt my, mm -hmm. my, my stomach. I think about mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And some of the times I was desperate to us. I am... Um, You're desperate. And, that and I realized... I've never been in that situation. That desperation yeah. for me, yeah, that desperation for me was me not accepting reality. Mm -hmm. The desperation was also because... Mm -hmm. I was not at a stage where I was comfortable with my own truth, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I will give a quick digression and come back quick to it. When I was studying away, I remember real intrigued about people who, who do um, S&M, right? Um, Sado, 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 Sado masochism, right? No. And w within that, <laughs> and I, I know everybody answered that perfect English, eh? but <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, I appreciated how honest mm. they were. Right? It's the <laughs> honesty about it. They would say, you know, I like pain. Yeah. And I like the pain because X, Y, Z. And they could have explained it. You know, the pain helps me this, this, this. And then to I quote. like inflicting pain because X, Y, Z. And then within the scenario, I mean, if those who know or don't know, there are things like safe words and things like that. And the relationship between the, 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 the um, I can't remember the person in charge. I can't remember the, the proper name for it, right? I don't want to say it now because... Dominant. Doma, uh, <laughs> dominant. Between the dominant... Dominatrix. Right. Yeah. The relationship yeah. was always one of, of intimacy and mm. truth. And trust. Uh, and trust. Mm. And yeah, I was like, trust, why yeah. Why it is the, the seemingly deviant side of it was more truthful than the seemingly normal side of it? Because you had two people in a normal relationship mm. lying to each other. And then in the abnormal relationship, you have two people who are honest with each other. And that well, I just want to pause there just to say that any, any information we have here, as, as Marshall said, this is qualitative analysis. Eh? We've, we've, <laughs> we've, qualitative we've, we've, analysis. This is all for research purposes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes, I, I always research into because <laughs> because one thing I always yearn for and and... In, in in this marriage that I am in is the, the closest thing. And I say closest because I myself mm -hmm. not fully always truthful. And I and I learning to, to reach that stage where I am just myself. And so we, we going back with all these scenarios. If in a relationship you're honest, then there mightn't be any red flags because you're honest. I'm telling you exactly what it is. You want to, to is come back to this. So I want to paint that, pyra I want if, to that pyramid if, again. If I honest and you honest, because let's say I honest, I say, you know what? I want to be with 10 women. i just given an example, mm. right? That is my honesty. However, you react should be honest. So you could say either, no, nah, I can't handle this, I'll go on. Mm -hmm. Or say, all right, not 10 in all, I could handle two, right? And in that moment there, that's a, that in itself is more true than pretending, well, you know, I say, no, I really, this is what I wanted. So I, I'm painting that scenario because if... Whether we support any friend, whether we're in the relationship, if it's based on truth, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't run into a lot of these problems. Your world wouldn't be shattered because it had nothing to shatter because you're honest in the first place. You know, I know my no, partner. No, no, you no. know your partner. No, and I, nothing I, to I, shatter. I'm going to disagree with you. Tell me. You had tell tell because, me. because I told you to talk about truth with regards to how you be, because what we want to talk about is how do you support that partner. But in the relationship, you know, when you have, you know, I talk about the vows where we talk about till death do us part and all that. And when you could, you should really say, I will always give you my truth. But in that truth, you can love somebody, but you want your cake and you want to eat it. And you know, they, they okay. come back to what is good for the goose, not good for the gander. So as a man, you want to, might want to play yourself. But in wanting to play yourself, you know that that woman is not going to accept it. So even if you tell her, she, you might tell her, but I want 10 women. She go, I want two. I have, I have had, and I'm sure we all have brethren who you have these discussions where they talk about they, they want a threesome and they want to do these different things. And the, the, the wifey, the girlfriend, what it might be partied at that particular point. But afterwards, somebody going through drama after that. They're going to have it, some hurt feelings. It, 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 there will be some, there will be some build up of something. At, at, That's at, why at you have to be point. honest. honest at, listen. At, yeah, but you, you see, it's all about being honest. But you, at that point, you still, you still, you talk, like logic. Yes, you'll be honest and you see it and something happens and you know that that, that happened as a result of this, this, um, this action, the action and reaction, right? But doesn't mean that it's going to hurt you any less. You are with this woman. You don't want to leave this woman mm -hmm. or you don't want this woman to leave you. 
you, you like that scenario, and now, as a result of these actions, this is going to happen as a consequence of that. I, un so, I understand on it, that. You, you, could live, you could live honest, but you could live in pain. I disagree. There's but that, no that's what we're here to discuss. I mean, I'm not expecting you to stand up here and agree with me. Honesty can never lead to pain. Could no, never. Yeah. That's a that's a, a, a kind of self comforting place if you're really honest with yourself and you do what you did you what you had to do, mm. then I agree it can't be in pain. It can't. It can you never you be. did what you're supposed to do. You try your best for whatever the result is. Eh? And I'd say that has to be left or right. I would say mm. it has to be in a relationship. Or your new conscience is clear, but maybe your, or you're kind of in pain. All right. That's what I want you to do. I know, but that mm. when you battling that internally, you're in pain. I, I don't see well, it. You see, where you're battling could be mm. reality, you know. And, and I say not say not specifically because let's just say um it have some men let me use your scenario. I want a threesome, I want to be with plenty women, and I still want to be with my woman. I don't want her to leave me and I mm. want her to accept it. That's what I want. Right. Right? You're saying that. Mm. But that doesn't mean that's the reality of it. Right? That is your truth and what you want from the world. So or what you think your truth might be, because eh? sometimes afterwards you might realize I didn't really. But, but you see, you can't thing. reach that conclusion if you do explore your, your truth currently, mm -hmm. right? So you, you explore your truth. You either you, you tell your woman or you, you say it out. You put it out there, right? You're not keeping it inside because keeping it inside is what creates toxicity, is what creates vices, <coughs> is what creates all these things that ruin relationships. You put it out there. The person now has you, then they understand the truth of you. So the person could say, no, I don't want to be no part right. of this, or I don't, I don't mind exactly. this. Now, if the person say they don't want to be part of it. <coughs> <coughs> Need some water. You need some truth. <laughs> need some truth. <laughs> right? Hold on, hold on. Before we start back, before we start back, are you really disagree? Because all I say is, oh, it's 12, up. it's 12, 12 minutes and we have three. So everybody had a, in terms of, the Final segment. So gather your thoughts. <laughs> gather, <laughs> gather your thoughts. But I also want to say that do we feel, because it's a real powerful topic, do we feel that we, in, in your thoughts, in each year's scenario, address whatever you feel might have been said? Mm -hmm. So, like, if you feel that we have the fight, fight hasn't been addressed, like, how do you support? If you feel that truth is your biggest thing, and then use that in your clothes. Okay. Some whatever you feel that you still lost on here, like for me, I still don't understand how because I'm truthful, I could still be in pain for that. And sometimes you have to live and learn. So at that point, I might think, hey, this is what I want, and that is my truth. But you don't have God coming and saying, hey, for sure, that is your path. And you go down, and the only thing is you could tell yourself, well, I did what I thought was best at the time. But doesn't mean that I'm not in pain now. But maybe as a no pain is it. no pain is a totalitarian. Maybe no pain is, yeah. but but there's a certain level of comfort when you know you <coughs> were being your most authentic self. There's a certain level of comfort that you right. can so live. Right. Pause that. So let me come up because I want I, I, I want I, I didn't like the fact that you know that you're saying there's no pain because but, but, sure. but, but it isn't as well. See, I have a I have a antidote. So, but, but I'm might, saying the, the pain see, might, is it might the, the pain. reality. Whether you think you wanted that it it not it don't exist. If you could feel fully like this is the right decision, everything in you is feel like this is the right decision. Then you move in that confidence, you move in that assurance that hey, I'm making the right decision. But doesn't mean along the way people might be abusing you and you're feeling you're like you want to cry sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you just you're just assured that this is your path. So you have focus and intent. But doesn't mean that that. But you're still recording, eh? Yeah, yeah, oh. you're rolling. So I could just continue. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is this is this is a this is reality conversation. Mm. So we're gonna have these moments of blips and mm -hmm. me coughing and all of these things and <laughs> cut and these different things. Are, but I I don't I don't want I didn't want us to stop the recording because this is this is this is what this we talk about. Talk is real. The content is real. So. <laughs> well, we not we not we not even editing. This is what people are gonna see. What we say in here, like right, you saying right, that, right, is right. what they're gonna right. see Perfect. because. It it is it is real talk, mm -hmm. and I don't want us I don't want what I don't want us to shy away from those conversations because this is not a this is yes it's a produced piece but it's not produced conversation. I want us to be real, right. and if I make a mistake or say something, I want people to hear it because mm -hmm. it's it, part it, of it's part of mental. We are what we do. So I, I I still want to come back to that thing about pain. 
So, because making a decision doesn't mean that you're pain free. So, the reason why I was saying that honesty cannot lead to pain is because most people choose honesty at the time that's most convenient to them. You break the vase, only when your mother sees the vase, when you say, I'm the one that break the vase. Yes, you were being honest. But in reality, when you broke the vase, you were supposed to go to your mother mm. first and say, Mom, this is what I did. So I felt like, I feel like a lot of the times in relationships, we pause there. How was that then pain free? Because when I was growing up, mm -hmm. you, your mother now find the vase or your father now find the vase. Now is the pain. Because you will get that belt. Because, <laughs> again, you, but we don't know what, it, what it's like to actually... Tell mom before she find the vase. Mm. You know you're gonna get your your your, your backside mm. peel off when she she see it. Right. But if you went up before and say, hey mom, this is what happened, the real the, the you still gonna get you don't know that. We never know that. Right. Because most people, and this is what bringing back to my point, is that the truth is a path, not a moment. If you on the path of truth, you have no pain. You're speaking into existence what exactly, how you're feeling every, every step of the way, and your tribe, your woman, the person that you want to be with will find you. And what you're doing is giving them ample amount of opportunity to say... And information. And information, this is not for me right now, or can we come to a compromise in this particular situation because you're giving the truth as you're going along. Not when a moment is here, now is the time to, to tell the truth. So back to the story that you, you, the antidote that you gave. Kudos to that woman wholeheartedly for actually giving that uncomfortable conversation. That was real difficult to do. But she would have been feeling this way before. She had ample amount of time to say, hey, I'm not satisfied with something. That's a truth. That she, if she was following the path. So that the pain that was given to her partner at the time would not felt so jarring because it came from left field. Or, or it's possible, and if you're talking about delusion, she could have been saying this all along and the partner mm. was, not, was ignoring the red flags we talk about. But sure. and, and, so, and so, yes, in both scenarios, but what about the scenario that, you know, sometimes like they say, you, you're passing on carnival. You're passing, you see a woman, hey boy, you know, we spoke about what they're wearing and all this whining mm -hmm. culture. And you say, oh boy, Bumsy looking good. Are you going to look at your partner and say, hey, that girl Bumsy looking good? Yes. No, I, I know people who do that. Well, do okay, that? Well, there, there are people that do that. I haven't reached yet. Well, exactly. I, I haven't reached reach that. Yet. Oh, okay. But, but, no, wait, but I want, I want, a, I want a presence. I use it not to say. Sometimes, you know, the, the, you know, my grandmother used to say, you know, put your, put your brain in gear before you put your mouth in motion. So sometimes there are thoughts. You don't want to have a brain fart, right? And so in, in that scenario, she's going through what she's going through or whoever's going through, or it could be the male in, in, in a particular case, and you, it, it, it's a passing moment. You're not going to, at every stage of the game, go, hey, this is happening, that no, is happening, no, because you, know, you, you, might, you, you might, that relationship may experience degradation before, be, be unnaturally. So there, there, but, but we're, not, we're not saying that, we're not saying that every single thing that comes to your mind, you say, let me give you a, a, mm. a personal example. That time, I see women and things, and I say, hey, she she look her hips look nice in it, and I would say I want to see you in that. That's what I would tell my wife, and that's the truth. Cause I don't really want that woman. Now I acknowledge she looks sexy and she look nice, but I want to see you in that. Why do why do try in that? And in that moment, depending on how it was, because sometimes it looked nice, but all right. But depending on how it is, I would tell you truth in that moment. But that's not the quintessential man, and that is utopian in your in your environment. It, it, no, it, you, we would love if men could tell the truth and go and tell your woman, hey, you know, that woman. See somebody hip, look good in this. Hips look you great. Well, I'd love to see you in that. But that's not the reality. Why, a man why, looking why, at a woman. Why you have to tell your woman in the first place? I don't I, understand. Why why we happen on that? Why you have to tell him in the first place? It, it's an internal thought. You no, think they don't have the same no, internal thought? No, but you're gonna love though. Nobody's saying you have to say no look. Let me think your girl don't look at a man and say, Wait, wait, you looking real bad? Yes. But you but want to hear that? I don't want to hear it. Maybe you look. That's fine. You look. Just don't tell me I don't want to know that. Why I must like, hey, so, 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 so we've been honest. Fall into your every, every, everybody <laughs> have the, the honesty because my wife comes in, hey, it had a man, you look good in this thing. I think you'd look good in it. Let, let, me, let me audit now. All right, she finds something, look good. That's the honest part of it. And and here why I see it's how she it's how you're <laughs> phrasing it to make it so like, you know, I see you look good, I feel you should audit. I mean, oh God, I be right I know. I that, roll, I roll with it. I call because why? really, truly, she, you, you're looking and you tell yourself, hey, that yep. fella has some you know, abs, look at that, you're and, and coming out to say, 
because hey, I exist and I, I feel sit here. Wear that. You, you not looking like that man. It, 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 you know how that man looking. You putting that on, not looking. You see. <laughs> Okay. In my reality, that has happened way too often, trust me, right? So I'm not going you to know? that. But, but here, here, what I'm hearing from you and tell me if, I, if I'm not hearing correctly, is that the truth is supposed to absolve you from pain, right? The, let me finish and then you'll that, tell That's me. what Nyla said. That's my right? I, and I, and I, I disagree with that. The truth doesn't absolve you from pain because the truth is the truth. If... I wanted to thief all the, the sweetie from, from home when I was a child. The truth is I wanted the sweetie, right? And there are consequences to me stealing the, 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 the sweeties, right? Now, in my mind, I could say, you know what? I don't want to get no licks. That's what I want, mm. right? But then the reality is could be something else. So let me use that with the relationships. You tell the, the truth because either way, that is your truth. That is, that is your, your truth, how you feel in any moment. It have the person truth. The person as uh, using Nile, the person could either decide, you know what, this is how my partner feel. I don't want to be part of it, or I want to be part of it, or could handle half of it. Because we could, when we when we ha- holding on to a lie, we building the foundation on sand. We're not building the foundation on a rock. So even if it's 30 years into our relationship or marriage, if it was a lie in the first place, it will fall apart eventually. That is one. Two is there's a psychologist named Alfred Adler, and he have a concept called the life lie, right? And it, we, we, we craft this life lie when we want to manipulate and control everything around us. So we lie or omit because we want to control how people react, how scenarios happen, etc., etc. But the truth is we don't have that power. Uh, again, always a very, a very rich and powerful conversation. Um, and I think we're going into what we may talk about in other episodes because there's a difference between, or sometimes there are similarities, but there's also differences in telling the truth and living your truth. Mm. Okay. Right? As Nile pointed out, truth is a path and not a moment. But, but moments could be part of your path. So there's sure. a whole scenario around that. But I want us to close sharing what we've learned today, and I'm sure we've all learned, oh, wow. um, on... And, and responding to the narrative that, that was set before us today and the topic which is should a man should a man fight for a romantic relationship? <laughs> Short answer, yes. Right? And again, you know, for me, the relationship means you're fighting for the person. The relationship is the communication style between two people. That's what a relationship is. So as the people evolve, the relationship is evolving. So you know, the fight is really for the person. And I just want to just end or close with most fellas, and I know I'm almost sure that all of us went through the situation where we was in a relationship. We know that the relationship coming to an end. We don't want to be the one to break up with her. So what we do, we kind of drag our feet a little bit and we do real dumb and just trying to get her to break up with us because somehow in our mind, we think that that's, that's us doing them a favor, right? Fellas, let's stop doing that because essentially that is us now choosing the moment or let me retract that. We are not walking along the path of truth. So that's my little two cents on that. Now, come back, I, I would say I have the same answer, which is a yes. Um, you should fight, but a fight has to have rules, eh? And, and one of the rules, I think, is, is both of you all have to want it. You can't be fighting alone because that's a losing battle. And another rule that I see a lot of times, and I was telling a friend, a friend of mine this very recently who was in a situation, <coughs> and next rule is you have to have a timeline. As clinical as it may sound, mm. you have to give yourself the opportunity to say, okay, well, this is not going to happen. But to go on for years and years or months and months in that zone trying to fight, it's not healthy. It becomes very toxic for you, mm-hmm. for you all. And maybe there's a, a different vision later on that you know they need to start working towards. Yeah? You know, I wanted to close off, so I'm just going to give my two cents and allow you to put it all into context for all of us and summarize with your, with your you know, chest of nuggets that I know you'd bring. And I just share the fact that... <clears throat> You know, as um, as Shane had mentioned earlier, for those of you who don't know Shane, he's behind the camera, um, that one of the things you talk about, you know, when we talk about soulmates and we talk about, you know, wh- where you are also in life, your 
your journey might be their journey. Or your journey may have started at that particular point, but they, they took a side street somewhere. And you have to know that, you really have to know when your story, when the story is finished and there's no sequel to come. You know, you could, and then you might be looking back at the prequel to then determine how do we get here. But then that has to be when you're developing for another story. And at that point, there's no, there's nothing here the four of us could tell you with regards to how to deal with that pain because that pain is yours. That pain is real when it happens. And it's just how, how you grieve is just to really take that time to figure out what you do next. What is my next step? Because that's what you're in control of. You're not in control of what happened, because that's already ha happened. What is past this prologue. It is what can I do next to avoid that happening again and to, just, to, to live in that moment and to do it in a positive way. Because as you might have mentioned, in those stages, those stages might lead to violence. They might lead to so many other things as you're trying to arrest that pain and that grief that you're going through. But none of those things, in hindsight, none of those things are going to change what has happened. And it's just a matter of seeing that. I know, it's, it, I know it comes down to logic in many ways, but it really does assist as you start to arrest that pain to ensure that your story going forward isn't further contaminated by your behaviors at that particular point. Thanks. Robert, thank you very much for that. Um, should men, we men fight for a relationship? I would say it shouldn't be a fight, it shouldn't be begging, it should be an agreement between two individuals based on truth. So wherever stage relationship, which even if there's no relationship, face the reality of how things are and then move forward. Don't suppress any of your emotions. If you do feel anger, you do feel depression, you do feel sadness, express those feelings. But remember, you can't force anything or make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. This has been Manhood. My name is Johansi Ayudike. This is Robert Dumas. This is Shane Ramjit and Niall McNeish. Thank you very much for listening. Manhood. Brought to you in part by Reboot Sports Drink.